a while ago, I went to the Le Mans 24 hours, which if you don't know what it is, is a car race that lasts 24 hours. And so I got to see a lot of advanced and very high performance racing cars. And so I thought it'd be a nice idea to make a video about racing car aerodynamics. Okay, so let's say that we have a racing car, okay? So this is our racing car right here. It happens to be a Le Mans racing car as well, although from quite a long time ago. Now, there are two types of aerodynamic forces that act on a racing car or any kind of car when it's going down the road or the track. So first of all, we have the forces acting along the x-axis, so that is along the road, along the driving direction of the car. And this type of force is called drag. Now most of the time, the drag is acting backwards, so it's acting against the direction the car is travelling in, and this is just the wind resistance holding the car back. Technically it is possible that drag acts in the opposite way if the car is going backwards, or, or if we have lots of tailwind, right? but most of the time the drag is acting backwards. The other type of force that we have acting on this car, aerodynamic force, is acting along the y-axis. And this type of force is called lift. Now lift can be positive, pushing the car up like an aeroplane. In that case, the car actually wants to take off if it goes fast enough. Or it can be negative lift, pushing the car down onto the track, which is nice because it gives us more traction when we're taking corners. And this type of lift is called downforce in racing terminology. So ideally, we want to design the aerodynamics of a car in such a way that we have a car with minimal drag, because less drag means it goes faster in a straight line, and at the same time, maximum downforce to give us all that grip in the corners. But of course, that's not possible in the real world. In the real world, it always turns out that if you make a car that has uh, very minimal drag, you're also not going to get a lot of downforce. And if you design the car to have a lot of downforce, it's going to have more drag and therefore be less fast in a straight line. So now let's actually go ahead and take a look at the uh, the design features of the bodywork that you might use to create either a low drag design or a high downforce design or a more balanced approach, which is somewhere in between. So first of all, a low drag design might look like this, right? So it's just a very round, curvy shape that can cut through the air efficiently. So this is a very smooth, low drag design. It'll go fast in a straight line, but it has very low downforce. In fact, it has negative downforce. It has positive lift because, as you can see, the airflow is much faster above the car. The red color that you see indicates a high velocity airflow. According to Bernoulli's principle, when the velocity of an airflow increases, its pressure drops, which means we have a pressure drop above the car, we have normal pressure below the car, and so we're creating positive lift. So this car is actually behaving more like an aeroplane that wants to take off than like an actual race car. So it'll, it'll be quite terrible for taking corners and possibly quite dangerous dangerous if it goes very fast in a straight line. So a feature that we might consider to add downforce is the classic wing. So a wing is a type of spoiler, but it's not always a spoiler. Like a spoiler is simply a thing that you put on a car to disturb an airflow pattern in some way that you want. So a spoiler just manipulates the airflow in some way, whereas a wing is a spoiler that's specifically designed to create downforce. So what it is, it's basically an airplane wing or an airfoil turned upside down. And what it does is exactly the same thing as the roof of our car did in the previous example. So the geometry of this airfoil accelerates the airflow below the wing and decelerates, slows down the airflow above the wing. So again, according to Bernoulli's principle, which says that when we increase the speed of an airflow, the velocity, we get lower pressure and the other way around, we get higher pressure above the wing, lower pressure below the wing, and so we're creating negative lift, aka downforce. So that's a nice feature. We've now got a wing, we've designed the car to have a bit more downforce, but we've also added quite a bit of drag. Another thing that you might consider is to add a splitter. So what is a splitter? Well, a splitter is 
in very basic terms, a plank that sticks out from underneath the bumper of the car, a plate, basically. It's not shaped like an airfoil, it's not anything weird and advanced, it's basically a flat sheet sticking out from underneath the car. So what does it do? Well, of course, it splits the airflow, as its name suggests, but why is that useful? Well, let's just take a look at our previous example again with just a wing, right? You can see that the air that runs into the front bumper of the car stagnates, right? The air runs into the front of the car and it comes to a stop because it runs into the car, because it runs into an object. So you can see that we've got this blue collar in front of the car and that indicates very, very low velocity airflow. Now, this simulation includes a splitter. Now, as you can see, we still get the same effect. We get this blue collar in front of the bumper of our car. The air still slows down. Uh, the velocity still decreases. However, we've now got this velocity decrease happening above our splitter, above this plate that we've added. We've also discussed that the air pressure increases in an airflow when it decelerates. So that means we get quite a pressure increase above that splitter. At the same time, the airflow below the splitter just continues because there is nothing obstructing it. And so the pressure below the splitter is actually much lower. And that means we create the pressure difference and that pressure difference creates downforce at the front of our car. The final thing that we're going to discuss in this video that adds downforce is a diffuser. A diffuser allows the airflow from underneath the car to expand as it reaches the back of the vehicle. At the back of the diffuser, the velocity of the airflow is equal to the velocity of the airflow behind the car, which is, let's keep things simple, equal to the velocity of the airflow around the car, and that's equal to the speed of the car. Okay, so let's say the car is travelling at 40 metres per second, that means the airflow is 40 metres per second, so the velocity at the back of the diffuser is 40 metres per second. However, the speed, the velocity of the airflow increases as a channel gets narrower and decreases as the channel gets wider. The back of the diffuser is much larger than the beginning of the diffuser, which is underneath the car. And we've also discussed that the airflow, as it expands, decelerates. So 40 meters per second is the decelerated state of the airflow, which means the actual velocity of the airflow underneath the car must be much greater than 40 meters per second. So what we've now done is accelerated the airflow underneath the car. The diffuser basically sucks air from underneath the car, accelerating the flow underneath the car, and of course, again, according to Bernoulli's principle, which we've discussed earlier on, as an airflow accelerates, its pressure decreases. So we're now getting a drop in pressure underneath the car, and that creates a lot more downforce. So here you can see all four simulations again next to each other. Now you can see we've got the low drag car, we've got the car with the wing, we've got the car with the splitter, and finally we've got the car that also has the diffuser. So we're getting more and more downforce. Um, as we go along, but we're also sacrificing more and more of our load drag capabilities. Now, of course, these are just some very simple designs that I quickly made in a couple of minutes in Microsoft Paint. Uh, in reality, there is a lot more that goes into designing these things. And so you can also see that in a real racing car, it looks a lot more complicated and advanced than these designs. However, these designs do show you what the basic principles of either generating downforce or minimizing drag are. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course thank you for watching.